Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Today we're at the Capitol in Salem and we're talking to your elected leaders. My guest today is Senate Republican Leader Ted Ferrioli. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you so much for inviting me. You are concerned and trying to learn more and do more about an energy bill. And it's um, designed, to, at least purportedly designed to improve Oregon's efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. The problem is um, that it's so complicated and uh, so uh, connected to uh, philosophy and, and I believe wishful thinking, it will raise prices, it will not reduce carbon. And that's not just my assessment. Uh, members of the Public Utility Commission's emails that were brought forward with the Freedom of Information Act filing indicate that it uh, to quote them, the bill is a shell game that will raise prices but won't reduce carbon emissions. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's one of the series of, of proposals brought by progressives, like the low carbon fuel standard, uh, that will make massive changes, redistributions of uh, people's purchasing power, uh, ostensibly to reduce car Oregon's already minuscule carbon footprint, huge price increases, it's really kind of a thing to change people's behavior, mm -hmm. but it really won't reduce carbon. Um, the, the unintended consequences will be higher prices for folks on fixed income, seniors, uh, higher costs for every uh, service or every uh, purchase that's made in Oregon uh, because energy cost affects everything without really arriving at reduction in, in carbon. There really are better ways to do it. Uh, if we wanted to uh, focus on conservation, uh, the Public Utility Commission says that we could probably meet uh, a decade's worth of Oregon's future uh, carbon reduction goals by simply uh, conserving the energy that we have and making better use of Bonneville Power Administration power and the wind and solar that we already have in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So we could avoid those costs, still get the car real carbon reduction, and not displace a bunch of workers or or offload costs onto seniors and those on fixed income. Well, and there are some corporations who put a lot of research and development into the carbon capture systems. Yes. And so there are things like that out there that work pretty efficiently. Uh, you, you know, the, we used to think that the world was running out of oil. And the folks that believed in technology said that we can have all the oil that we want. Now we're, America's an oil exporting country because we did invest in technology. So I tend to really focus on those TED Talks about energy and uh, look to technology to solve a lot of the problems that we have. Uh, it, it isn't that we argue with the objectives of conservation and reducing our carbon footprint. It's just that we want to do it with incentives and technology and not forced mandates that fall more heavily on the poor, uh, people of limited means, people on fixed incomes, the elderly, people in inner cities. So, you know, and also people in rural areas that don't have a lot of purchasing power. So there are ways to accomplish. We don't argue with the objective. We just argue about how we should get there. Well, and I certainly think that any citizen in Oregon would want an energy plan that actually worked, that wanting to, you know, reduce carbon, it would, you'd have to have some incremental success demonstrated for that You know, there's effort. an interesting parallel there or a corollary. Uh, Republicans, I think, are not very good at doing the symbolic things. We're more practical. I, I think we're accused all the times of being very number-oriented. Uh, Democrats, I think, are much better at capturing the symbolism of issues. And so we have this argument of symbolism over substance. I think we need a little more focus on substance right now and a little less focus on symbolism. Uh, if you want to, so to agree with you, let's do the things that really work and try to get together on how those can be accomplished without also delivering unintended consequences and pain for ratepayers. Well, at the end of the day, when things work, you get the positive emotion that comes. Right. It just doesn't come up front. It comes afterwards, right. after the results. Yeah. So it's the, it's the objective and it's the outcome that we should celebrate. Well, Ted, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. This is Ted Ferrioli joining us. I'm Dana Cowley. You're watching Charter Local Edition Northwest in Salem, Oregon. Thank you.